thriller that's also a slice of life, with the Israel-Palestine conflict being at the heart of the story. Two of the leading further actors have in fact joined the Israeli military's reserve duty as the war against Hamas escalates, following last week's horrific and unprecedented terror attacks on Israeli soil. Earlier today, I spoke to Fada star Rona Lee Shimon, who plays a spy called Nurit, the only woman serving in the Israeli counter-terrorism unit on the show. In this emotional conversation, Shimon describes in graphic and blood-curdling detail the brutality and barbarism that Hamas terrorists displayed as they butchered, tortured, maimed, raped and even decapitated Israelis, including little babies terming the Hamas attacks as the worst assault on Jews since the Holocaust. Rona Lee Shimon says Israel will do whatever it takes to win this war as it's fighting for its survival. She also had a special message for India. Listen in to this exclusive interview. Joining me now on News 9 Live is a very special guest from Israel. I am joined by Rona Lee Shimon, she is a famous Israeli actor and the star of the very popular television and web series Foda, which is, of course, a slice of life and deals with the Israel-Palestine conflict. Rona Lee is the female protagonist in the spy thriller. She plays a spy called Nurit, the only woman in the Israeli counter-terrorism unit on that particular show. Rona Lee Shimon, Thank you so much for speaking to us here on News 9 Live. Thank you. Thank you for your support and for covering our side of the story. Thank you. We are doing our best to take your voices, not just to people in India, but even abroad. I can assure you that. You know, firstly, my heartfelt condolences over the horrible loss of lives that your country has suffered. Uh, the tragedy is unspeakable. We've all been shocked and horrified by what we've seen. You know, you've spoken about these Hamas attacks very passionately. You also posted a video on Instagram, which is very moving. So let me begin by asking you, what are your thoughts on what has happened? Uh, my thoughts vary from uh, heavy grief and from deep quest to understand how something like this could have happened in 2023 uh, in in such a unity of the world and, and where where the free world is is controlling all over the world and how is this still possible? to even be imagined and more so to be executed in the most vile, monstrous way. You know, we hear from the world that, that it's fake. People don't believe that what we have shown to the press and through the media is true. And I have to say with all honesty, I understand. Because I think if anyone in their right mind would truly understand and comprehend, that means that we have to admit that some part of us is already gone. And that is, I think, the true tragedy of, of what has happened. You're quite right. This is something that really has shamed humanity, Ronali. I can tell you that. It's not just the people of Israel, though you are the ones who've suffered this, but I can tell you each one of us around the world has watched this in shock, horror, and with utter disbelief. Now, what makes these attacks particularly horrific is not just the scale on which they were carried out, but as you mentioned, the barbarity and the brutality that was displayed by these Hamas terrorists, butchering women, children, babies, the elderly, beheading babies, torturing people, burning some of them alive, raping and parading women. It's just shocked our conscience. What does one even say 
about this kind of barbarity. Of course, there are many who are saying they've left ISIS and Al-Qaeda behind. You know, it, it, what can we say? What any human alive can say about what our eyes have seen these past nine days? There is no words in any language that can describe the way that we feel, the way, the, 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 the horror that we have witnessed. And, you know, the sad part is it hasn't even started yet. The, the, the testimonies are still bringing in from the people who survived the atrocities, who have seen with their bare eyes how their friends were massacred, butchered, alive, burned alive. This is evil at its finest hour. And I'm saying this with the utmost sorrow because I think it should, there has never been a bigger alarm to humanity outside of the Holocaust. The fact that this has happened and there are still people who are not believing that, that it's happening should be very alarming. You know, many, including the Israeli Prime Minister, has said what you just said, that this is the worst attack that the Jews have suffered since the Holocaust. Many have compared it to 9-11. And then I have spoken to some Israelis who say this is actually so much worse than 9-11, given the scale and, again, the manner in which these attacks were carried out, the brutality, the barbarism, and the scars that it has left behind for perhaps generations of Israelis. I, I agree because I think the world, I don't know if the world has yet understood the exact details of what happened. These are people who crossed the borders with booklets of instructions exactly what to do, what to do to women, what to do to children, the beheading of heads, the cruel act of rapes in all its forms, the burning of people alive, the, the intention brutality that was demonstrated on October 7th is something that the human mind has yet to comprehend and um, and we are all in such deep trauma because I think not only did we underestimate the brutality of, of uh, religious extremist people such as Hamas, which now prove that they are ISIS, but also we we belittled the, the, the brutality of humankind because what was done to us, it's not war. You can't call this war. You can't call thousands of cowardly people sneaking into people's homes at six o'clock in the morning. Grabbing... grabbing babies from their beds, making their mothers see the beheading of their babies, raping women in the most cruel way that we've ever seen, ever. And not only that, but also parading that and, and, and filming all of that and putting it live on Facebook, on Instagram, is... Um, I think it's a game changer as far as how dark this just got. And that's why I think it should alarm not just the people of Israel. Mm -hmm. I think it should alarm every human being in their right mind all over the world. I think there is no doubt about that. And anybody, anybody who comes up with even a remote justification of this barbarism needs to hang their head in shame. There can be no 
justification for this kind of barbarism. And like you said, people have actually come up with conspiracy theories, raised questions about whether those babies were actually beheaded. There's been a debate around it. Beats me too. You know, you know what the thing is, is that these videos are so damaging for a human soul that we in Israel keep debating if we should share this to the world as evidence or prevent that. I want to I wanna tell you that it took Biden, and I know this because I know people who were with him when they briefed him with everything that happened. It took very little time for him to understand the atrocities. And it took him even shorter time to say, I am behind you no matter what. And um, it is shocking. And, you know, I have to say, Jewish people have suffered in the Holocaust. It hasn't even been a hundred years and people are denying there are many many people who deny the holocaust ever happened and i say this with so much sorrow but the fact that but the fact that uh hamas has filmed um everything that they have done, this will stay forever online, forever. No one will ever be able to say that this didn't happen to us. It happened. The world will wake up when the world gets out of the shock of what happened and they will see. And then, you know, it takes stages because the human mind cannot really comprehend what happened i understand it's true we are our whole country is still in shock and we're grieving and all of us know someone who was either kidnapped murdered beheaded we're a small country you know we know everybody um and with this pain that unites us this is how we are going to prevail because our strength is in our unity and we are going to win this war. This is war about our existence. And we don't have any other choice but win. You think this is about your existence. There is no doubt that Israel is united as it needs to be in this difficult hour. You know, you were talking about how Hamas has put out so many videos recording their own barbarity, which is there for the world to see. And I must admit that even though I've been a journalist for so many years, it was difficult for me to watch those videos. I looked away every time I saw somebody being burned alive. I had to look away. But you know, talking about the nightmare, as you mentioned, Ronali, it is far from over. Yes, you're a grieving nation. Uh, you know, it's been uh, 10 days. The death count keeps going up. It's crossed 1,300. And the primary reason why the nightmare is far from over is because there are hostages that Hamas is holding in Hamas, uh, in Gaza, I beg your pardon. Just today, the Israeli military has put out a figure. All these days, we were wondering whether they were 100 or 150. Today, the Israeli military has put out an official figure. I can tell you they've said that 199 hostages are being held by the Hamas terrorists in Gaza right now. Most of them are Israelis. Some of them are foreigners too. How concerned are you about the safety um, of these uh, hostages? Because we know that Hamas terrorists use their own people as human shields, and chances are they could be using these hostages as human shields as the Israeli airstrikes continue. How worried are you? We are all worried because these are our children. This is all of our children. Um, and we are frightened for their peace. Um, and I suggest, I really strongly suggest Hamas to get a grip and to at least, at least keep them alive and safe and well in order to help them come home. I think this should now be 
an international effort from all the countries in the world to do everything in their power to bring the hostages back. This is the most important thing for everybody, for all of Israel. And with that, you need to understand the, uh, these, the hostages are from 36 countries around the world. That means that the whole world should stand with Israel in the mission to bring the hostages back. That is the first thing that needs to happen. And I promise you that we will prevail and we will win this war. You know, since we're talking about hostages, I interviewed the families of a few hostages a couple of days ago, Rona Lee, and it was one of the most difficult interviews that I have done. Um, it, it, very hard to see those mothers weeping and begging for their children's lives, uh, you know, pleading with Hamas, but those uh, are beasts, they don't know humanity. But you know, one of the mothers um, said this, and I want to ask you this, I spoke to the mother of 13 year old Noya, who's been taken hostage, Noya has autism, she, she's a child with special needs. Her mother, Dalit Dan, told me that Israel should drop everything and bring the hostages back first, even if it means stopping the bombings and the airstrikes. Now, this is an emotional mother talking, somebody who's very worried for her child. What would you say to that mother? Look, at the end of the day, I'm not a politician and I don't have the right answers because there's a reason why very specific people are handling these kind of situations because it's it's almost a lose-lose situation right everybody loses when we come so far in in the direction of war of extreme war um i have to say that with that i know for sure that the IDF is doing everything in their power to protect citizens, to call them before we bomb any place. We tell them exactly where we're gonna bomb. We are bombing headquarters of Hamas. We are bombing headquarters of places that we know where they're launching their missiles from. Problem is that they are located in civil around civ civilian population in hospitals in kindergartens in school this makes our fight very very difficult and with that we are doing everything a human should do in order to save as much lives as possible in this bloodshedded war that's what we are hoping and praying for you know, now I have to ask you this. You know, I am a fan of Fodder, as are scores and scores of people across India. And I wish I could tell you this under better circumstances. So I have to talk about that. You've played a spy in Fodder, somebody who's a part of Israel's counterterrorism unit that deals with terrorists like the Hamas terrorists that we are talking about today. This is not their first attack, but it's their biggest and worst attack on Israel. Does it feel surreal to you as an actor that real life has met real life? It feels surreal to me as a human being, not even as an actress. Yeah. I don't think anyone in their right mind could have scripted this. Yeah. I don't think anyone could... I don't think anyone can write a scene where um, uh, someone from Hamas would cut open a pregnant belly of a woman, taking her fetus out of her body, burn it alive, and then burn the mother. I don't think there's anyone in the world that could think that was possible to do. So in that sense, it's nothing like Fauda. It's just, you know, this, this is real life. At the end of the day, Fauda is a TV show. We are actors. We are uh, making art in order to change people's minds and 
and and and and tell stories but this horror story is happening right now especially to the families who lost their loved ones and to the hostages who are waiting to be rescued by us and by the world you're quite right nobody could have written this script it is so much worse than perhaps anything we've ever seen on television or in the movies which is why it must be so surreal you know you've played uh, a spy on tv on screen somebody who takes on the bad guys the terrorists but seeing what these monsters have done to your country to your own people i guess you're quite right the actor in you must be saying i could never have come across a script like this never and 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 you're right we are in a point of history where it is good against evil and you know only history will time will go by and history will say whoever was on on the side of the good guys and whoever wasn't and we will never forget we will never forget again you said forda is nothing like this but do you see any parallels any similarities between what you know you've done as an actor as part of forda and what has happened in real life i know this is far far more horrific but do you see any parallels any similarities you know i find it very very difficult to think about everything i've ever done in my life at these horrible days we're just trying to survive this we're just trying to um make the the families stronger the people who survived stronger and to get ready for the big war that is ahead of us and we are concentrated on winning and so everything that i've done is not relevant for for me personally uh i am focused on on this to tell our stories to the world and to win the war i completely understand that you know uh, it's also uh, remarkable to see how so many israelis have come together at this time 400000 reservists have been called up by the prime minister many public figures it's quite remarkable many public figures have joined active duty including former israeli prime minister naftali bennett also these include correct me if i'm wrong your father co-stars leo raz and zachi halevi are you in touch with them have they spoken to you about joining reserve duty we saw pictures of leo in fact who was involved in rescue operations a few days ago. Idana Medi is in in is in reserves right now. Um everybody's doing whatever we can to uh to support the mission. Um and we are here the people of of my country know because every that's what everybody does every second of every day. And our strength as a nation is in our unity. and we have never been more united that's why we know we're going to win and and we're willing to do whatever it takes in order for that to happen willing to do whatever it takes have you by any chance had a word with your colleagues your co-stars about this about what about what's happened and them joining reserve duty have they spoken to you at all about it they already have some of them uh idan were just texting and we have a group chat about you know whatever we can do we go to talk to the people who survived from the kfar aza and we talk to them and we trying to relieve their sadness and and we're packing uh food and supplies for the army and we're doing hasbara and we're doing whatever the country needs of us whether it's going to the army whether it's helping uh to support the army from the outskirts of it and um and rebuilding everything that needs to be rebuilt which is going to take a long time it will take a long time and it is heartening to see the forda family coming together and in a sense serving the country in every way that they can in real life and not just 
in real life, not just on screen. You, you know, many have said you are uh, of real heroes, you know, when they saw pictures of Lior uh, rescuing uh, some of those people who were either being held hostage or were trapped, they said he is a real life hero. I think that's how a lot of people around the world feel uh, about uh, all of you. Um, I have to say yeah. it's not about Fauda. The real heroes are our soldiers, the real heroes are the people who uh, with everything they had just took their personal cars and went into the, to the, to the inside the massacre to pull innocent people out of the shelters before the army even got there. It is, um, it was uh, a country effort and everybody, our heroes, everybody's doing and it's not even being a hero, it's just being a human, I have to say. Yeah. You're quite right about that. Um, Ronali, would you be able to give us a sense of what the current situation is like in Israel? I know you said we are a country in shock. We, you know, it'll take a long time, obviously, for you to recover from what's happened. But while there are scores and scores of people who are still mourning their dead, there are families who are anxiously waiting for their loved ones to return home safely from captivity. Can you tell us, you know, our viewers watching in India and outside, what is it like to be an Israeli today? Can you describe that for us? I think that is a very complex question because we, first of all, we are loyal to what needs to be done in Israel. So our first efforts all the time is to be with what needs to be done here. So we have groups of people who are uh, supporting and trying to get even money, trying to get uh, resources, trying to get world support in order to bring the hostages back. And in, on the military side, there is, you know, us get our generals are trying to figure out how to attack and how to annihilate Hamas for once and for all. That's where we are. Yes, the Prime Minister, the Defence Minister, they have all said that we're going to wipe Hamas off the face of the earth. Uh, you know, you've talked about how the world needs to come together and stand with Israel at this time. There are hostages from 36 countries. Ronali, what do you as an Israeli want and expect from the international community today? I expect the international community to first understand that these were crime against humanity, mm -hmm. not just us. We're not alone. The fact that the world can say, yes, but yes, but what about this needs to stop immediately? We need to come together with the pain of what had happened, with the atrocities of what had happened as humankind. This is, if we're going to let this slide, we are doomed. If this brutality were ever to happen again, we are doomed. And, um, and I expect the world community to stand by us at any given moment until we get our hostages back. That's what I, what I expect. You know, I also want to mention to you that Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi has expressed full solidarity with the people of Israel. He said that publicly. He said that to your Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu. Of course, I mentioned to you that your show, Fodder, is very popular in India. All of you are much loved here. What would you want to say today to the people in India who are watching you? I want to say, first of all, I've been in India five times. That is one of the most places that are most dear to my heart. Um, I love the Indian people. I love their generosity of spirit, their good heart. And nothing fills me more gratitude than to know that you guys are by our side. And that is the most important thing that you can do for us. I completely understand. And like I said, the people of uh, India have said so. The Prime Minister of India has said so. We are definitely with Israel in this difficult hour. I'm sure you're aware India as a country has been a victim of multiple terror attacks. We had our own 26-11 Mumbai terror attacks, which were 
likened to 9-11, and now you have your 7th October, we do understand the pain of terrorism and what it does to people, how it wipes out lives. You know, I also want to ask you, this war is escalating. Many expect that there will be a ground invasion by Israeli troops of Gaza soon. Do you have any thoughts on how this war can end? Because people are suffering on both sides. I think the first thing that needs to happen in order for us to even get closer to a peace agreement anytime soon, that Hamas needs to be wiped out from the face of the earth. That's what I think. Right. And uh, finally, as we wrap up this conversation, I know it's not easy to talk about this, but I'm, I appreciate you opening up to us so much. As we wrap up this conversation, as an Israeli who feels very strongly about what's happened, your message to the world today. Let's be on the good side of history. Be on the good side of history. That's well put. That is well put. And yes, history will judge us by how we reacted to this horror. And like you said, it should never happen again. It should never happen again to Israel. It should never happen again to anyone on this planet. And for that, we all need to come together. Rona Lee Shimon, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. I know it was not easy for you to talk about this. I can see how emotional you get talking about the suffering of the Israeli people, but you're brave because you are fighting for your country in your own capacity in whichever way you can. And I hope and pray, as do the rest of Indians, that this is over very soon and that all of you are able to heal. Our thoughts and prayers are with the people of Israel. I can tell you that. Thank you so much. And again, thank you so much for, the, for, the, for our good friends, India and Indian people. And we are very grateful for your support. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. And yes, we will continue to watch Fada as well. We absolutely love your show. Thank you. Thank you so much. You take care.